I never thought I would make a video even semi defending Gwyneth Paltrow, and this might turn out to be a very controversial take, but here we go. If you don't already know by now, Gwyneth Paltrow's wellness routine went viral on TikTok. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. And people were really, really upset by what she had to say. Eat food. Eat food. And we have got to I stop calling this woman the almond mom final boss. My cholesterol's good. She is the Do size that bad of shit medical beliefs that Gwyneth has. Please don't do this. Just feed yourself. You deserve food. You deserve air. This isn't wellness. This is sickness. It should be illegal to put this out into the media. I wasn't planning on making a video on this, but then two of those people were Tess Holiday. Because everyone is too afraid to be fat and Abby Sharp. So many trigger warnings for what I'm about to say here, folks. And to me, their responses were just kind of so off the wall that I felt I had to say something. So in case you have not seen the clip yet, let's watch the Gwyneth Paltrow clip first. What's your wellness routine look like now? I eat dinner early in the evening. I do a nice intermittent fast. I usually eat something about 12. I, I have coffee, but I really like soup for lunch. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. For dinner, I try to eat, you know, according to paleo. So lots of vegetables. It's really important for me to support my detox. Now, if that is all Gwyneth Paltrow eats in a day, yeah, it's pretty bad. What would that be like 300 calories? But let's listen to the question again. What's your wellness routine look like now? The question was, what is your wellness routine? It makes sense that she wouldn't list off everything that she eats in a day because that wasn't the question. Therefore, she only brings up the foods and the protocols that she considers to be contributing to her wellness routine. That's at least the way I took the question the first time that I heard this clip. But maybe I'm wrong because that is not the way the rest of the internet seems to have interpreted this clip. We're gonna start with dietitian and fellow YouTuber Abby Sharp's reaction and then move on to Tess Holiday's. I did not think Gwyneth could get any more dangerous to the public, but then she posted this. I eat something about 12, have coffee, have bone broth for lunch. What I'm hearing is that she eats nothing for breakfast, just black coffee until noon. Okay, not eating until 12, pretty standard intermittent fast here. Nothing too problematic so far, I thought. But for some reason, Abby Sharp is like hardcore sneering the entire time she's playing this clip. She does not like Gwyneth Paltrow. Which, I mean, okay, fair, whatever, but at this moment in time, kind of uncalled for because so far, everything Gwyneth said has been pretty mild. I was almost like disappointed in Gwyneth, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is her morning routine. I was expecting so much more from the vagina candle lady, the vagina egg lady, the vagina steam lady, the goop pseudoscience queen of the world. This is her morning routine? Like, I, you know, I was kind of hoping for some like chanting, maybe like a cryogenic chamber, maybe like, you know, something involving blood. I was really, really expecting a lot more. And then all we got was she just, you know, doesn't eat at night and then stalls breakfast until later in the morning. <laughs> like, that's it? That's it, Gwyneth? Just sort of a letdown for me, I think. I think I was just really expecting a little more than that. Then has bone broth for lunch, which clocks in at a measly 40 calories per cup, and then has some vegetables for dinner to support her detox. I agree that bone broth as a first meal after a fast does sound a bit concerning. Bone broth is obviously very nutritious and a homemade version could actually be quite caloric depending on what type of bones were used and whether or not the fat was extracted. But Abby, hearing that she's only having vegetables for dinner, she's hearing wrong. That's not what she said. She said that she eats paleo for dinner and has lots of vegetables. Bone broth, vegetables, and maybe some paleo protein in there, whatever the f that means, is generally going to make up such a small fraction of the calories that an active woman needs to thrive. I mean, we just don't really have enough information to jump to the conclusion that she's not getting enough calories in the day from this 10 second clip of her talking about her wellness routine. Again, I can't really believe that I'm defending Gwyneth Paltrow right now, but I just feel like this is such a narrow interpretation of what was said and implied in this clip. Yes, if we take the clip at 100% face value with no nuance applied, then Gwyneth Paltrow was eating 300 calories a day and that's really concerning and fucked up. And it's being implied that she has some form of disordered eating, right? And hey, 
Maybe she does, it would be plausible. Gwyneth Paltrow is an A-list female celebrity who was in her teens and 20s and the 90s and early 2000s, AKA the absolute height of diet culture. A time when you literally could not be too skinny. And not only was skinny the epitome of beauty, but basically the only acceptable form of it. As I'm sure Gwyneth Paltrow knows, being that she starred in Shallow Hell. Gwyneth Paltrow also seems to have been pretty much the same weight her entire adult life. I wonder what her secret to staying so slim is. Maybe she's starving herself after all. Anyway, everything I just said was said to make a point. I'm speculating. I'm creating evidence out of nothing and I'm judging her primarily based on the way that her body looks and nothing else. Of course, it is totally possible that Gwyneth Paltrow has a messed up relationship with food and is a quote unquote, almond mom. But a 10 second clip of her discussing her wellness routine and nothing else is not evidence. Maybe she's just a lady who's into health and wellness and doesn't like like junky processed foods that much. Maybe she doesn't get hungry in the morning. We really don't know. And that wasn't very much information to really make any sort of judgment off of. Here's a post from Gwyneth Paltrow's Instagram from about a month ago. Sometimes it's a challenge to make grain-free, dairy-free, legume-free paleo dinners. I get stuck, but Brad and I have felt so well eating this low inflammation way with the occasional heavenly cheat meal, of course, that I keep challenging myself to find new ways to tailor food to this way of eating. And the food she makes actually looks pretty freaking good. <laughs> we got some like fish here with like a, um, I don't know what they call when they put those herbs on top like that. And what is this? Like a full plate of avocados with, looks like some sort of fish as well on top. Oh, it's crab. Crab avocado sashimi. A pasta of some sort and another salad here. I watched another video of her like dumping oil on her eggs and she's talking about these extravagant breakfasts she makes for her boyfriend every Sunday morning. She's also written a ton of cookbooks and seems to enjoy food. I don't really feel like it's fair to condemn or criticize someone for choosing to eat in a way that makes them and their body feel good. And that is objectively healthy. Maybe all the stuff surrounding it isn't healthy, but the words that she said and the food that she's talking about, that's healthy. In a response clip, Gwyneth Paltrow also said that she's suffering with high levels of inflammation and a chronic illness. For over two years now um, to deal with some chronic stuff. I have long COVID and the way it manifests for me is very high levels of inflammation over time. By the way, I eat far more than bone broth and vegetables. There's excellent evidence that diet heavily impacts the inflammation levels in the body. So through all her fancy doctors and checkups, Gwyneth Paltrow has determined that this diet is helping her in some way. I just don't really feel like it's fair to criticize or condemn what she chooses to consume. And I think people are actually calling this health shaming now. But to recap, an 18 hour fasting window is often far too long for healthy females to help support normal reproductive function. Again, we don't really have enough information to make the claim that she's doing an 18 hour fast. We only know that she started eating at noon. Not to mention, is that a fair criticism of an 18 hour fast? There is definitely mixed data when it comes to women and intermittent fasting, but intermittent fasting on the whole has been shown to be so healthy for people that I guess I just don't really understand why a dietitian would denigrate the entire concept of intermittent fasting with an extremely condescending tone. Gwen's intermittent fast might be one of the most scientifically valid things she does all day, okay? I feel like we can let her have this one. Paleo is bullshit. Nobody needs to be eating like their ancestors. There's a reason why their lifespan was a fraction of ours today. So now paleo is just bullshit? It's not fair or accurate to call paleo bullshit when there's quite a few studies now proving that it's at least a healthy protocol of eating for people. Abby has like 15 videos telling you what she orders at fast food restaurants, but now she's calling the entire concept of paleo bullshit. Like I get it. These diets can become scammy and a lot of times they're marketed as these miracle weight loss cures. But nutrition is confusing enough unless it's a dangerous way of eating. Why just completely shit on it? Paleo is not for me and I think for the average person it's probably unnecessarily complicated and not necessarily in a weight loss way. I experimented with keto a few years ago and though keto is definitely not for me and I don't want to do it again, I learned so much about my body and sugar and carbs by just not eating them for a period of time. And now I eat carbs, but I know how they feel. I know how it feels to have too many of them. And I find that information invaluable for me and my health journey. If it works for someone, they feel good, they like it, it's helping them, it's verifiably nutritious. I'm just not quite sure why I would be so, so dismissive of it. For the love of all that is holy, you do not need to detox. Okay, I agree with her here. 
<laughs> also, what exactly do we expect Gwyneth Paltrow's diet to look like? Did we expect her to start a day with like a taquito and a big gulp from 7-Eleven? To create goop, right? To sell insane wellness products at insane price points? I would sort of hope that Gwyneth would at least like be into wellness. You know what I mean? Like, would it not be more messed up if she did not do all this wellnessy stuff to start her day? I don't want to pull the lady card here, but it does feel like we pay so much more attention to women's health decisions, while the male side of wellness culture is kind of just free to do as they please. I think they like to call male wellness culture biohacking. Like, that's what that's what they call it on the boys side. And I'm not judging it, okay? I'm into it. I think it's so fun. And why would I not want to make little tweaks to my lifestyle and try little things here and there so that I can be healthier and like biohacked. But things do get pretty extreme over there sometimes. And yet nobody gives a fuck. I remember reading a Tim Ferriss book when I was like 13 and the guy says he does like, what was it? A three day fast once per month and a five to seven day fast once per quarter. No one cares. I don't assume that he has food issues. I actually don't even think I know what the guy's body looks like. <laughs> I barely know what he looks like. Ironically, Gwyneth Paltrow's ex Coldplay frontman Chris Barton also came out and says he only eats one meal per day once at four o'clock, that's it. And guess what? Nobody cares. We're all like, cool, nice discipline, bro. And I'm not by any means saying at all that we should start judging guys more for their biohacking routines. I'm saying that I think this whole thing when it comes to Gwyneth Paltrow is sort of just kind of unfair and overblown. If Gwyneth Paltrow's wellness routine was caffeine pills and laxatives, then okay, yeah, let's all start freaking out. But otherwise it's sort of out of context and yeah, it's just kind of unfair. And maybe I also kind of think that the whole point was to stir up controversy. Apparently Goop actually thrives off controversy. So if you hate her, then you're also like playing into her hand. Now, in my opinion, Abby Sharp had a bad take, but Tess Holiday had a fucking terrible take. Okay, so my camera died for the 50th time and it's been a while, so I changed and I'm ready for this doozy of a test clip. Also going into this, I'm making the assumption that you're up to date on all the test holiday lore. So if you're not, this section probably will not make sense, but it's too short of a clip for me to like go and explain everything. So go watch my hour long test video instead. I have bone broth for lunch a lot. You know, what I find most mental about this is that we've known for years that she is okay with glorifying her eating disorder. And I'm not judging because I have an eating disorder. Okay, there is just so, so much to unpack here. <laughs> we are about to listen to possibly the most hypocritical take of all time. Bone broth is not a suitable meal. And then to end your day with just eating vegetables? Tess Holiday is not about to tell the world what a suitable meal is. Her entire thing is supposed to be about not judging people by what they eat or their perceived health or their body size. And then literally given the first possible opportunity, she's about to judge someone by what they eat and their perceived health and their body size. And how exactly would Tess Holiday know that Gwyneth Paltrow has an eating disorder? Is she perhaps inferring this based on the size of Gwyneth Paltrow's body? Because like two TikToks ago, somebody asked Tess about her personal diet and her ED, and Tess had this to say in response. Or maybe, just maybe, it's impossible to look at someone and tell whether or not they're struggling with an eating disorder or if they're healthy. And more importantly, whether either of those two things are any of your business or concern. Okay, fair. So why the double standard for Gwyneth Paltrow then test? That TikTok was posted like literally like two weeks ago. You're literally asking people to hold you to a different standard than you are publicly holding someone else to. The hypocrisy is just, <sighs> man. But yet people continue to give her airtime, to give her a platform, to take her advice. Meanwhile, what is she advocating for here? What, the Gwyneth Paltrow should never be invited to speak on a podcast again? Imagine that Tess was held to the same standard. To take her advice because everyone is too afraid to be fat. Okay, I can literally speak after every word that she says, but I don't wanna keep cutting her off. So Tess then goes into this big story about how they were at the same restaurant and Gwyneth ordered a cauliflower pizza with no cheese. And then Tess had this to say. And I'm not here to judge what people put in their bodies, especially as someone that has a restrictive eating disorder, but this shit isn't normal. And it's affecting a whole other generation of young folks who think that eating like GP is appropriate, is okay. 
I don't think many 17 year old girls are taking diet tips from 50 year old women like Gwyneth Paltrow, but I'm quite sure that many young overweight women look up to Tess. Actually, I'm sure of it. I can literally see them in her comment section. So who is really affecting the next generation of young folks? And I'm not saying that I have all the answers and I have it figured out because I sure the hell don't. But with all the talk about Ozemic and all these other weight loss drugs, it's exhausting. It is okay to feed your body. Carbs are not the devil. Fat isn't bad. And I mean fat in your food and fat on your body. It's not bad. But hey, anything for a dollar, anything for the cost of people's mental health. Anyway, that's enough test holiday for me today in the next little while. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Click here to watch my last video on Lunchables. Thanks for watching. <laughs>